Check them out, but now with any, no further ado, yes. we turn to our special guest who was here today, just flew in from Dubai. all over the, the, the world, it <laughs> seems like. You know, he's a world international <laughs> motivational speaker. Global. You global. Know, global friend of everybody. <laughs> George right. Frazier. George Frazier, how are you, sir? Welcome. Um, it's good to be back. This is, what, my seventh or eighth? Trip to this I don't know. Show. It's good to see you. Again. Man, you, you, like you look playing. great. I can put this photo Thank down. You. I don't even talk about no notes. I can, uh, we just talk. And, and, and we don't have to worry about a bad hair day for you anymore. See? No. We don't have he's, a he, he's definitely a friend of the show, is he not? <laughs> so, George, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing great. And, and as you pointed out, I just, I just got back from Dubai, okay. uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Oman, and uh, Bahrain uh, mm -hmm. speaking. Uh, and what an incredible country. I mean, here is a country where the people of those two countries um, pay no taxes, uh, get a free education, mm -hmm. uh, both primary, secondary, and college, uh, get free housing, free health care, and there's no crime. Um, of course there would be no crime if you get free housing, free wow. health care, right. pay no taxes, yeah. right? So it is just, it, it is, uh, I think, a remarkable... Let's see how we can, uh, <laughs> yeah, duplicate that here. It's, okay. it's, it's a remarkable combination, I think, yeah. of spirituality and capitalism. Wow. That the five pillars of Islam are woven throughout their government and their whole capitalistic society. Mm -hmm. And that spiritual base really means that a rising tide lifts all boats. So the oil wealth in Abu Dhabi and Dubai is shared by everybody in the country. And so mm -hmm. if you are native Abu Dhabian or Dubaian, mm -hmm. yes, you get free housing, free health care, free education, mm -hmm. uh, and you pay no taxes on your income. It is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. seen two countries quite where Dubai and Abu Dhabi are. And, and remember, they discovered oil in 1958 they began pumping oil in 1964, and so when you look at what's going on in those two countries, it has all happened within the last 40 years. Wow. Just still last, fairly new. Right. Yeah, right. So it's, and it's a desert. It's, the average temperature is 120 degrees. It's right on the Arabian Gulf. It's the Arabian Desert, uh, and they've done all of this in, in 120-degree temp <laughs> temperature with 100% <laughs> humidity. Um, and that's what happens when you have a group of people that share common values, common culture, a common vision, and you mm -hmm. have incredible leadership. All right, wow. you know, <laughs> we weren't even going to talk about that necessarily, but thank you. Yeah. Now let's go, just, just in case we have some viewers who are just now tuning in for the very first time. I don't know That's why, and, and we've been here for 10 years. <laughs> but if you're just joining us, you know, you're yeah. like, well, who is that young man that Anthony and Cynthia are talking to? Uh, let's go back and share mm -hmm. with our viewing artists, who is George Frazier? Talk about our humble beginnings. Yeah. Right here New in York, Cleveland. Right? Born in, I mean, not, yeah, born in Brooklyn, New York. So ah, I've been see. living in Cleveland right. longer than I was in but New York. But I knew York. it was a New York connection. <laughs> That's right, absolutely. Brooklyn, New York. Okay. I mean, we, got, we have to distinguish Brooklyn, New York. Right, that we don't want to be confused I, that, way I'm able, that way I'm able to say, is there Brooklyn in the house? You see, because okay. Brooklyn has always said that. But okay. anyway, <laughs> um, born in Brooklyn, New York, uh, uh, of a family of 11 children, eight boys and three girls. My father came to this country in the early 1900s from Guyana married a beautiful, fair-skinned sister, Ida Mae Baldwin from Lumpkin, Georgia, and they moved to Brooklyn. And when I turned three years old, uh, my mother became mentally ill. And because my father was a cab driver, uh, he had to work 12 to 14 hours a day, mm -hmm. uh, he could not take care of 11 children. My mother was institutionalized for the balance of her life. So we were uh, put into an orphanage. So I stayed in an orphanage from three to five years old, and then we were broken up into threes because no one would take 11 children, mm. and I spent the entire, uh, my entire young life until 17 years old uh, growing up on the mean streets of Brooklyn, New York in toxic foster homes, which is not an indictment on foster homes mm -hmm. in general. It's just the ones that I was right. in was Specifically toxic. those. Mm -hmm. toxic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> at 17, um, my uh, guidance counselor, uh, suggested that I drop out of high school because he didn't think wow. that I would should finish or mm -hmm. I was college wow. material. A guidance counselor, someone guidance. in education That's suggesting it. you drop out. Right. We got, okay. We're guiding you to quit school. Right, right. And so I didn't right. agree with him. And so uh, uh, for a couple of years, I uh, worked on the midnight shift at LaGuardia Airport mopping floors 
and I paid my way through college, and the rest is history. Uh, so much for my guidance counselor. Of course, I've been back to visit him and ask him, when was the last time you wrote uh, three best-selling books? Uh, here's a guy that you didn't believe was college material. Fortunately, I disagreed. So well, He could have motivated you in saying that. Really. Yeah, you know, but no, I think the real point here is it's not, <clears throat> it's not where you uh, begin, it's mm -hmm. where you finish. That, mm -hmm. That's the real point. Mm -hmm. And don't let anyone ever tell you what you're not capable of. You see and maybe... Gets one in there. That's hmm? right. You see how he just got that in yeah, there? That's right. right. That's, I'm right. going to just throw... I'm going to give you that one for free. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, so now you went... So you, you, how did you get here to Cleveland? Well, I aged out of uh, foster homes. In New York, you age out at 17, which means they don't pay the people who are taking care of you anymore. So you either leave or they agree to keep you. I had to leave. And so I went back to my home... Uh, brownstone that my father maintained in Brooklyn, New York, um, mm -hmm. because I had no other place to go. And there I was met by three older brothers and a younger brother who had also aged out before me, and a younger brother had had some issues and he left foster homes. And But the difference between them and me was that they were heroin addicts, and um, I was not a heroin addict. Uh, and so I said to myself, I had to get out of here. And so as soon as I was able, I packed up what little I had, got on a Greyhound bus, and came to Cleveland where I had a sister who took me in. Okay. Now, what's the point there? You've got to be able to remove toxic people and bloodsuckers from your life, people who drain you of your, your, your time, your energy, your patience, people who drive you crazy. And this is very easy to say, but very difficult to do. Why? Because most of these toxic people are your family. Most of these toxic people are your so-called uh, friends. Most of these toxic people are your significant others. So if you're not able to remove toxic people and bloodsuckers from your life, you will absolutely fail in life. And in my speaking around the world and meeting all of the great and most successful people in the world, that is the one trait that all of them have that mo no one ever talks about. Let me dimensionalize that for you. Do you uh, realize that our president had to do this in public? That had he not delivered himself from Jeremiah Wright, from his pastor, right. who christened him, right. or christened his children, right. who married him in Michelle, right. had he not delivered himself, and he did not want to remove his pastor. He right. gave a whole speech on race in order to avoid removing Jeremiah Wright from his life until Jeremiah began acting stupid at the National Press Club right. and then he had to deliver he himself to, from him. Had he not done this in public, we would not be calling him President, President Obama, Obama today. Right. So yeah. this is a very important point. I speak to it out of my own life. I had to do the same thing. Wow. Mm, that's heavy. That is amazing. Your sister, so in a sense, she saved your life. Yes. She saved my life. And the interesting thing is when I went to move with my sister, I did not report back to my family in New York for five years. I did not want them to know where I was mm -hmm. until I got my own life together. And when I got my own life together, I went back and I saved two of them. Wow. Wow. Okay. So again, I, again, I hear this story from time and time again. Like every time I mm -hmm. hear it, I learn something new mm -hmm. or get another perspective right. or a fresh look. At, um, or another look. Let me just go yeah, there. Yeah, another look. look. Um, at, at, there it is. It's another <laughs> it's look. It's another, yeah, look. No, another yeah. look. at, at I, I think there's another important point in here, and that is we have to be careful who we surround ourselves with. We have right. to be careful of the people that we associate ourselves with. Mm. Um, introduce me to your five closest friends, and that will tell me who you are. Mm. As they know wow. and as they go, you go. When you choose your partner, you choose your life. Right? So what's the point here? Don't spend major time with minor people. People going nowhere want you to go nowhere with them. People doing nothing want you to do nothing with them. If you want to change your life, change your relationships. I tell young people all the time, if you're hanging out with students who are getting C's and D's, you're going to get C's and D's. Mm -hmm. If you're hanging out with students who are getting in trouble with the law, you're going to get in trouble with the law. Right? right? So you sure. have to be careful <laughs> of your associations. Relationships right? are everything. Uh, everything. Yeah. Everything. Right. And most right. people think it's education. George, put a pen right there. <laughs> Relationships. No, no, put a pen right there. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, wow. I didn't even get to half of the question I needed to talk to. We need to talk about your life, you know, some more you know, in Cleveland, United yeah. Way, um, at Power Network ne here in Cle right. in Cleveland, how they got started. The many Look, books you've written. You I mean, know, the Black College Tour, <laughs> right. using the books for the, for well, we the, got some more the time, classes. Though. But you know what? We got more time. We do. Thank you, Cynthia, for telling me that. <laughs> um, 
We're going to take a quick commercial break. And after that commercial, we're going to come back with more of George Frazier. And we're going to talk about some of what I just mentioned and talk about this Power Networking Conference 2010 in Hotlanta um, for this year that you need to go check out at least one of them in your lifetime. So we'll be right back with more of Another, Another Look. look. 